how to take notes is one thing. Now, how to take notes if your grammar is weak is different from somebody who has excellent grammar. Because if my grammar is really good, I can write down bullet points, individual keywords, and make up sentences. Welcome back. This is the final, the ultimate video of this playlist about how to get 90 in PT, how to get 90 in the listening section. So listening is the one section that people have given the exam 15, 20, 30 times, not with us, but in total, even after many attempts, they still struggle in listening. So the first reason why is because of their speaking. I've already mentioned to you guys, speaking gives you marks into listening from your repeat sentences, from your retail lecture, and even from your short answer questions. So first thing is you need to make sure you're maximizing your marks there. Second thing that you need to worry about is obviously the marking distribution. So earlier I showed you a table somewhere over here that our video guy can edit about what are the questions you need to focus on. Still, number one, the king is right from dictation. Number two is summarize spoken text. Number three is fill in the blank. Number four, highlighting correct words and highlight correct summary and all the other little questions like MCQs. So this is something that you can see over here. You can focus on these particular questions. Right from dictation, for the last three years, they've been doubling the question bank, the database every single year. When we first started doing this, there were less than like 100 or 150 dictations. We didn't even bother sending them in the class. They didn't matter that much. You made mistakes, you got partial marks. You changed the sequence a little bit, you got most of the marks. Then they doubled the material. Then they changed the marking. They made it more strict. They started caring about the sequence, about the location of the words, about the correct spelling. So right from dictation is the king. Now, there's many places where you can practice it. For example, on our portal, we've had, I don't know, more than 700 right from dictations that come to your exam. One of the things that helps you is a week before the exam to our students in the class, we give them a prediction file with the most frequently repeated. So rather than them studying a thousand questions again, they can just focus on those 100 or 120 questions that have a high chance to come into their test. That's number one. Unfortunately, that's not enough. You can't snooze for months and then only practice 100 dictations the day before your exam and hope for the best. So most people, even with good English, they're able to catch a lot of the big keywords. Student, professor, assignment, Friday. But they miss the, in, on, for, from. So you need to know grammatically, which is something we go through in the class. I can't explain everything in one video, but you need to know in that situation how you can check the sentence by itself. Are you having the right number of words? Are they in the right sequence? Is it supposed to be singular or plural? Am I missing the or not? If I'm missing it, is it gonna be a or the? So the exam itself is not easy, it's getting harder. You need to make sure you're getting the maximum number of marks. So one is practice, one is practice materials, one is prediction files. But the last thing is, like I said, you need to know, you need some guidance of how to check for your mistakes. Second question, summarize spoken text. Before some people, what they used to do, some coaching centers, institutes, they used to give people like 60 paragraphs, memorize. In the audio, they used to tell them, if you hear the word vitamin D, don't take notes, write from memory. Now again, some of you are good at memorizing, I hate memorizing. So what do you need to know? You need to know the strategy. How to take notes is one thing. Now, how to take notes if your grammar is weak is different from somebody who has excellent grammar. Because if my grammar is really good, I can write down bullet points, individual keywords, and make up sentences. If my grammar is weaker, I need to get maybe larger chunks of words, and I need to connect it in a proper way. So those are some of the things you need to get the feedback. Um, there's, again, lots of free websites that they show you your grammar mistakes, they show you your spelling mistakes, but in reality, they don't teach you, they have no way of assessing if your content itself is good. Because unless you work for Pearson, you have no idea exactly what is the code. So we can show you your mistakes, we can check your keywords, but that's something that you still need to get human feedback. Fill in the blanks. We've posted a video a few months back, which you can probably find somewhere over here, about mistakes people make and why they're failing their listening and writing, even though their dictation is correct. So go watch this video, we've explained it in detail. What are the tiny, tiny mistakes that people do and they don't realize it's costing them a lot of marks? Because you need to think about it this way. For fill in the blanks, I usually get two to three questions and each one usually has about five to six words. So I can have anywhere from 10 words to nearly 20 words. Meaning if you're making too many mistakes there, 
it's almost the equivalent of missing one dictation. And you miss one dictation, you're gone. You don't get 79. So you need to be able to maximize the number of marks you're getting there. And to our students before the exam, we give them a list of about 200 keywords that come repeated in the test they need to know. There's one word, for example, vernacular. Vernacular. If you're a non-native English speaker and you listen to a British accent on full speed, you're going to have a hard time writing that word. And I've had so far two students that had it, and they got in the material, and they still misspelled it. So in that situation, not much I can do. But we can teach you how to check if you're missing an S or an ED. Because on full speed, native English speakers, they don't emphasize, and they don't say this drug was developed. They say the drug was developed in 1985. So to a lot of people, it sounds like they say develop instead of developed. Next, highlight correct summary. Most people tell you, don't worry. It's only worth one mark. Just pick something. Go next, next, next. It's the right idea, but in reality, it does contribute marks towards your reading and your listening. And if you watched the previous video, we've mentioned that reading itself is getting harder. So you need to know the right trick, the right strategy to get this one correct. And the way we do it in the class, most of our students get it 80 to 90 percent correct every single time. Highlighting correct words, again, that's something that takes practice. You might get a fast audio, you might get a slow audio, but that's something that um, could be, you know, fairly easy. You could make a few mistakes, but as long as you don't mess it up too badly, you should pass your listening. So just to summarize, write from dictation is king. Summarize spoken text, you need to have the right strategy, but you need to get some human feedback. Listening fill in the blanks, go watch this video right now to make sure you know what kind of mistakes you cannot make and how to fix them. And everything else in between, it's all about time management. Because you miss one dictation, you're gone. You miss two dictations, you may not even get seven bands. You miss three or four dictations, you might have a hard time getting 50. So part of it is practice material, part of it is actually knowing the basics, how to fix it by yourself in case you miss something. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button wherever it is, somewhere over here. Comment, and you guys can see we've had lots of comments, thousands of students down here commenting that this helped them get 79 plus without paying thousands for unlimited courses. So hopefully I will see you guys soon. I can't promise that, but we'll try to help you out in some ways with materials, resources, practice questions, and you'll see a lot more of our teachers rather than just me. Uh, giving you the tricks and the strategies and the updates. So I really, really hope that whatever you've been watching has been helpful. I hope to see you guys soon. God bless and good luck.